Cristiano Ionescu, New Zealand. Um, you are talking about security in these programs. What are the measures? What um, solutions have you brought in? New solutions. Sure, the question was about security and how do we measure security and what are some of the new innovations yep. that we think about. Uh, it's a great question because we actually do it on both fronts. Uh, customers and organizations and our partners expect Microsoft first and foremost to deliver high quality software that is free of security vulnerabilities. And so a number of years ago we launched a new process we call the Security Development Lifecycle to build and deliver software that's free of security vulnerabilities, or new work, I should say. Uh, it means that we architect the software, we test it in new and different ways, we battle harden it, we actually bring in uh, what we call black hat uh, experts at hacking to try to take the software down. And we do all of that before we release the software. And so, obviously, one of the metrics that we hold ourselves accountable to is the number of security vulnerabilities uh, that are in an operating system or the database platform. Vista has had the fewest security vulnerabilities, even before SP1, of any commercial operating system ever made available on time. And that commitment to security, we carry forward into Windows Server 2008 and SQL Server as well. If you look at the last four years, uh, the total number of security vulnerabilities for SQL Server that are critical in nature is zero. The same number for Oracle is in excess of 200. Now what that is a factor of is just an engineering discipline and a focus on how do we build software the right way. Now at the same time, another measure that we hold ourselves accountable to is innovation. Innovation around security is absolutely paramount. Because uh, if you do security the right way, we can allow organizations to do very new, very powerful things. Uh, I mentioned uh, at an organization uh, this morning, Val, the mechanical ship engineering. Uh, yes, what about the Ichi Pronaf being Valat? Ichi Pronaf. They're doing some really exciting things in terms of using Hyper-V technology so that one ship design project in the past required one server for confidentiality reasons. But from a server consolidation perspective, that can be very costly. Now we're allowing them to actually run multiple very secure environments all on one server. So it's a new type of functionality that's enabled and it saves cost. We showed an example this morning around SSL VPN, which we've deeply integrated into Windows Server 2008. So that if you have a user that is outside the firewall, but wants access to a corporate line of business application, that SSL VPN technology creates a very powerful and secure uh, way for an external user to have access to an application. It's a new way of working. It enables mobile workforces. Uh, the last one I'll give an example of before somebody quiets me down is uh, network access protection. So with Windows Server 2008 and network access protection, we essentially allow people to come onto the corporate network and be interrogated with, uh, think of it as sort of a health security check to make sure that the system is up to date on its patches, on the status of its uh, antivirus software, what ports are open or not. So before it can uh, get on the network and cause a problem, that interrogation takes place. Uh, and so it's a, it allows organizations to have guest workers come and work in new and interesting ways. So we hold ourselves accountable both the quality and the innovation in terms of the new scenarios that we make available. Does that answer your question? I like you both for this. Uh, Windows Server 2008 comes after basically five years of pause on the uh, Windows Server front. What is this edition's main uh, sales pitch? Is it uh, security or virtualization or what is it? Yeah, I think it comes down to you know three or four key areas. Uh, first of all, it is around the savings in terms of total cost of ownership that we provide. And you get that in a lot of different ways. Server core, for example. Uh, requires less footprint in terms of the servers, so there's green IT savings in terms of uh, consumption of power, for example. The new management technologies that we provided to allow an administrator to do things like, uh, you know, complex geo-clustering and failover that in the past might have required a doctorate in science, and today a wizard can actually walk you through the process. Uh, it could be around the integration of things like Hyper-V and virtualization. Uh, which has TCO savings as well. 
That second core area really is, though, around virtualization. And the strategy with Windows Server 2008 is to really democratize virtualization. And so we made a decision to make the server, con uh, high, the server uh, virtualization fe uh, a baseline feature of the Windows Server operating system. So you can just from the get-go have Hyper-V installed, uh, which allows people to save money, provision servers dynamically, uh, provide disaster recovery type capability sets, and more. And so that's the, really the second core area of focus for us around this release. And the third that we're particularly excited about uh, is Windows Server as a web computing platform. The work that's gone into two key areas here is really driving this. On the one hand is the server core functionality. So we can now run a headless server, if you will, that's been streamlined from a performance and reliability perspective just for the web server workload alone. But secondly, the work that's gone into IIS 7 in terms of the scalability of the platform, the ease of management. Uh, I think uh, one of the great examples there, for example, is we now have a script-based functionality so that you can provision a new web server with a simple text file, if you will, whereas in the past it required a complex you know, meta store in terms of configuration management. And then also in terms of web programmability. So with IIS 7, we've done things like support PHP uh, with our fast CGI support so we can have an extended both not only interoperability capability set, reaching out to an additional set of uh, developers in the marketplace, but do it in a way that's extremely performant. The work that's happening around ASP.NET with the native AJAX implementation, the support for things like REST and POX and RSS natively in the iOS 7 platform is just profound. So it's about cost savings, it's about virtualization, and it's about web platform. Yeah, the ratio between uh, uh, the innovation uh, spendings and uh, spend spendings on the maintenance and the operational costs? Yes. Uh, our aspiration over the next few years is to move that closer to 60-40. And the only way that we can do that is through increased automation, easier manageability, better interoperability support and integration with existing systems, and continuing to train the skills gap. So we think 60-40 is aspirational, but we also think that this approach around dynamic IT, this set of releases, and this new paradigm in and around software plus services is going to allow organizations to be much more flexible, much more agile over time. Now the second part of your question is what are some of the specific things that we've done in this set of releases that are really going to help shift that? Well, we've spoken about a few of those already today. Um, one of the core areas is to take tasks that hitherto had been very complex, very challenging, and automate them via wizards. A great example of that is the wizard support for geo-clustering, where literally in the past it took days to complete that type of a, a task. And with Windows Server 2008, you can do it in a matter of minutes. That allows you to move that mix from 80-20 to 60-40. Another great example of that is the way that we are enabling web designers and web developers to collaborate in new and interesting ways. You know, there used to be this tension where someone might go into a, a very rich, uh, you know, imaging tool set to create the user experience for a website and they'd hand the specifications and the photos over to the web development team, and then they'd try to write it into code, and then maybe somebody would make a change in the UI again. And that would take a lot of time. It diminishes the 80-20 as you have that back and forth. Well, with this set of releases across IIS 7, Visual Studio 2008, and the integration that we've done with the expression land, we have fundamentally changed the paradigm for how developers and designers can work together to not only innovate, deliver a new set of compelling experiences, <clears throat> but do it in a way that shifts that 80-20 line. So a few examples around our excitement passion there.